up, God. We come for no other reason, Jesus. We enter into your presence from a state of emptiness, knowing that we will be filled by you, Jesus. Knowing that you're going to fill us until the point of overflowing.
of fresh pouring from heaven, receive the outpour of fresh oil. to be in the house of God tonight. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful that the Lord has not forgotten about me. That he still remembers me. He still knows the concerns that relate to my life. And if you're here tonight, I want you to know that God has not forgotten about you. Every promise, every prayer, every miracle that you're believing God for, God wants to remind you tonight that he has not forgotten about you tonight. He is not. Hallelujah. I feel that in my spirit on tonight. We're in a new series for moving forward. I'm excited. Did y'all enjoy the first two series? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, of course, our uh, theme is the year of the dominion there, the year of dominion. And you cannot have dominion uh, without understanding the protocols of prayer. Can I have dominion if you don't understand how to work finances and money, and how to work the principles? But we're getting to the third part of this. Everything is uh, designed to be around dominion. And tonight we're going to do what we call Christology. Christology is a doctrinal series. It's about the study of Christ and who Jesus is. Because if we can be honest, we've been in church all of our life, but we don't have an understanding of who Jesus is. And this is the time for us to have strong understanding in our faith in who Jesus Christ is. Amen? And so we're going to get into that Matthew chapter number 16 on tonight. Matthew chapter number 16. And I'm going to start reading at verse number 13. And I'm going to read down to verse 16. Keep your Bibles open. I'll be here for most of the night. Expository preaching tonight. Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 through 16 on tonight. Three passages of scripture tonight. Hallelujah. And it reads like this. It says, the word of God says in Matthew 16, 13, NIV says, when Jesus came to the region of, of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, <laughs> others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus said. He asked, who do you say I am? Yeah. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, or Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you that we're open to receive your word tonight. Thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to do in this place. Give me the wisdom and the diligence to follow your leading as I am communicating your scriptures. I give you glory, honor, and praise of tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I want to come from a Sunday tonight, part one of the Christ Over Culture series. I want to talk about, I got a revelation. I got a revelation. I got a revelation. 
So what's powerful tonight is we're taking on this series uh, to help us navigate to the greater dimensions that God is calling us to go to as a body of believers. We must first and primarily understand that many of us concerning our faith oftentimes have allowed other people's views and opinions to shape the foundation of our faith. Come on. Instead of finding a revelation about who Jesus is ourselves. Some of us, whether we have a context, whether we've been in church most of our life, or whether you have been in church for a temporary uh, season or a temporary time, we have allowed what preachers have said, we have allowed what other people have said to foundationally affirm who Jesus is in our life. Yeah. And so understanding this context of who Jesus is, Jesus is the core of our faith. We have one Bible, and if we can sum up the Bible in one word, it will be covenant. Yeah. The Old Testament being the Old Covenant, and the New Testament being the New Covenant. And it's Jesus Christ who has established everything according to our identity and our faith for true salvation. Yeah. Understand that the first Adam in the garden, he followed dominion. Yeah. But it was the last Adam in the garden of Gethsemane who came forward and to help us to retrieve our dominion. Yes. It was the first Adam who failed to temptation. And this is why in Matthew chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted because he is called to fix what the first Adam fumbled. Yes. Peter denied Jesus three times yes. and then Jesus comes back on the scene and asks Peter three times, do you love me? Every single time to need to fix what Peter has handled and broken. Wow. And so tonight, I want to get to deal with something because I want to help us with something that's going to help us navigate because Jesus in the text, he comes to Sister Philippi, he asks his disciples, he said, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And this is the core, core question that we're asking ourselves tonight. Who is Jesus? Wow. And this deals with a key word called doctrine. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says that all scripture is inspired by God or God breathed for doctrine, for sound doctrine, for correction, for rebuke, for instruction, that the man of God can live fairly and equipped according to the purpose that God has for our life. So we all must understand that God has called for us to have a doctrine because every destiny has a doctrine. Yeah. And if you don't have the right doctrine, it's hard for you to have the right destination that God has called for you to have in your life. Right. What is your doctrine? Doctrine, this word means teaching. Good. This word means instruction. Yeah. This word also means experience. Yeah. This word also means opinions. Uh -huh. And so you must understand what is my is my doctrine correctly established by the word of God, or is my doctrine being merged or mixed between opinions of what other people believe? I need to know Jesus for who Jesus truly is according to his word, right. not by the opinions of what other people yeah. think about Jesus. Yeah. And when it comes to your doctrine, it comes by what you've been taught, it comes by what people think, and some of the strongest enemies against the doctrine of Christ is TikTok. Wow. Because on TikTok, it's designed, it, this is designed, the program of the, the, the platform is designed to indoctrinate the minds of people to get you to believe anything that man puts out there and not what's originally in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus deals with a religious spirit connected to doctrine. Yeah. And he calls out the religious spirit because he asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? Wow. And they have all this false doctrine. Mm -hmm. Some say John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Some say Elijah. Yeah. They were quick to tell yeah. Jesus, what other people were saying about him. Psalm right. Saint Jeremiah. They had all this false doctrine because the spirit of religion lives by information and not revelation. Wow. When you're bound by the spirit of religion, wow. you let information lead you and not revelation lead you. Yeah. When you're bound by the spirit of religion, you're bound by information. That's why oftentimes when we read the word, 
For most of us, it comes off as information. Because it's like, man, I don't even really understand it. But when you partner with the Holy Spirit, yeah. it no longer becomes information. The word becomes into a place of revelation. Yeah. And when you have revelation, revelation will lead you to transformation. Yeah. But you cannot transform by information alone. You can only be transformed when you partner with the Holy Spirit. And when you partner with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you revelation. And when you have revelation, you're changed in your life. When you have revelation, you won't go back to your past. When you have revelation, you worship differently. When you have revelation, there's a momentum in why you pray. When you have revelation, this is why you result in putting the plate down. Because I got a revelation. I got a revelation to why I'm healed. I got a revelation to why I'm delivered. The reason why I worship so hard is because I got a revelation. The religious people are driven by information. They're driven by blog sites. They're driven by Google. But I don't need Google to establish a revelation. But when I get into the Word, the Word of God comes to life when I... God is, that God is trying to renew the doctrine of his people. Because we got to have a sound doctrine. Because doctrine is tied to our deliverance. And I'm preaching this word because this is a deliverance message. Because if we're going to get delivered, deliverance is not just the casting out of demons. Deliverance also is the changing out of your doctrine. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 4 and 1. It says in the last days, the Spirit will bring in to show us that there will be a doctrine of demons that will come to seduce us. And you gotta know, you gotta know sound doctrine tonight. Your doctrine has to be granted in the Word of God because when your doctrine is right, it changes every attribute of your life. We have a doctrine problem. Generational curses are not just Spirits that transfer curses due to what our great grandfathers and great grandmothers have done in sin and the covenants that they made. But generational curses are passed down doctrine. You have a doctrine that you believe about your health. As a man, you are groomed by a doctrine. As a man, there's a certain doctrine that grooms you. This is why some of the music that we listen to, even though you're saved now, you still can't get some of that music out of your system. Because the design of music, because he's the prince of the airways, the design of music is to indoctrinate you. It's to give you a doctrine about relationships. It's to give you a doctrine about marriage. It's to give you a doctrine about love. And this is why we need the Bible. Because we need the Bible to change our doctrine. We don't translate Christ well with an infected doctrine. If I go to China, I would not be able to operate in China because I don't understand the language. I would need a translator to translate to me what these signs mean. What is this man saying to understand how to function in that culture? How are you translating Christ to your culture? Wow. How are you translating Christ to your job? Yeah. How are you translating Christ to your children? Yeah. I want to translate Christ well. Yeah. But some people are confused when we come to church every Sunday. And you get all this word. And you get all this revelation. Yet you're still translating mess on your job. I ain't gonna get help tonight. I'm gonna preach myself. Happy on tonight. Yet you still translating. Come on. Come on. You're still translating the wrong things to people. Yeah. So we misrepresent the kingdom when we got the wrong translation. Yeah. It's a doctrine problem. Doctrine, they say all men cheat. It's your false doctrine. Yeah. Based upon your experiences that you have seen, your daddy always cheated and ran the streets all the time. Every man that you dated ran the streets on you and cheated on you. And so then you come making a statement, every man is a dog and every man cheat the devil is like that's a false doctrine. But because you made the wrong mistakes in dating and you keep dating the same type of Negroes, that's what's leading you into a place of a broken heart.
We let it call it be. I feel the Holy Ghost. We're letting Megan the knees down. You're letting these, oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to use wisdom tonight. You get it, don't create a doctrine over the bad chick supposed to be. But a bad chick ain't got nothing to do with your figure. A bad chick ain't got nothing to do with your all oh, your body size. A bad chick ain't got nothing to do with how much money you got in the bank. But a real bad chick, I feel the Holy Ghost, knows how to tear it in prayer. A real bad chick knows how to walk in the Holy Ghost. A real bad chick. desires, but you got the wrong doctrine. Because wow. yeah. it's possible to be saved and still have a wrong doctrine. Yeah. He says, you, I can't take you to where I want to take you because you're letting the experiences of how you used to do church follow you into where I'm trying to take you ahead. So you say, you got to go through a detoxification. You got to detox everything you saw. He said, there were some things that were good, but most of the things that you were taught wasn't the full gospel. Most of the things that you were taught weren't really about who Jesus is. Most of the things you learned ain't about the next level. So he said, you got to go through a detoxification. And some of you are going through a detoxification right now. Well, God has you isolated and secluded huh? because God said, I'm detoxing you because you got the wrong friends telling you about me. Huh? I'm detoxing you because you got the wrong view of who I am. Yeah. So we make statements like, I want to catch the Holy Ghost when you can't even catch the Holy Ghost. Oh because it's all doctrine. <laughs> Because you're letting experiences that you saw grandmama in the Pentecostal church throw down chairs and punch over walls, and now you're scared to receive the Holy Ghost. You've been indoctrinated by family members that say it don't take all that to catch the Holy Ghost. Speaking them tongues that's strange and crazy. But you don't understand it was these tongues that allowed me to go to sleep at night. It wasn't melatonin, it was under the law of Oh, and I needed to be strong. All I do is shout, call me the mother of my son. For the Bible said, when I speak in tongues, I build myself up. When I speak in tongues, I lay down the fire. When I speak in tongues, I build myself up. When I speak in tongues, I edify myself in God. Some of you, out of the most, your auntie was giving you two dollars to put in church. And when they were just giving you two dollars, and she told you to keep 60 to yourself, I ain't got help tonight. It was putting a doctrine of stinginess in you. And now that when we in church outside of tax season, you still putting eight quarters in the offering plate, I ain't got no help tonight because you got the wrong doctrine. But God is saying tonight, I'm teaching you a new doctrine of the kingdom. So when you learn to sow for the next dimension, let your soul in the kingdom of God. The revelation is birthed by prayer and engineered by the word. Anybody that gives you a revelation outside of the birthing place of prayer and outside of the word of God, they're operating in divination. 
Because many people have a revelation, but the revelation is not birthed out of prayer. It's birthed out of a demonic place. Yeah. And so the doctrine has been to go. So God says, when I clean my doctrine up about who he was, about the Holy Spirit, about the gifts of the Spirit, about demons, about warfare, about this. When I clean my doctrine up, yeah. then he was able to shift me to a whole other dimension. Yeah. And some of you tonight, God, he's going to deal with your doctrine. Yeah. Doctrine deals with your beliefs and your, your experiences. Some of you, it's your trauma that's teaching you. Because yeah. trauma will train you. And trauma will give you a doctrine that's not God. And so you think the experiences of what you saw growing up, now you think you have to handle conflict the same way by putting your hands on somebody. Because that's what you saw growing up. Conflict resolution. That we don't even know how to have a conversation. Because everybody you saw growing in your family, they had to raise their voice in class to get a point across. It's a false doctrine. It's a wrong doctrine. But true believers in Christ, I ain't got to raise my voice. I ain't got to cuss you out. When I say what I got to say, I can communicate like a mature believer to get my point across. Jesus is dealing with the false doctrine. The doctrines were off. And the, the, their doctrines was, were, were off. The doctrines that began to shape how they did. But then I love this because Jesus also is teaching in the text. Because look at the scripture said. I want you to see in verse uh, 14. He asked the question, who do people say that I am? The Bible says, they replied in verse 14. So everybody replied with an opinion or a doctrine of what they thought Jesus was. But then he flips it, and then he says in verse 15, but what about you? He asks, who do you say that I am? Yeah. Notice it went from they <laughs> to only one person out of the 12 had a correct answer or revelation of who Jesus was. Yeah. Now when I ask you what people say, everybody responds. When I ask you what you do believe, only one person responds. Yeah. Wow. Now Jesus gives us Oh, God, help me tonight. He gives us principles of how you ought to handle relationships. Because in order for people to properly be able to walk with you, they have to not just have information about you, people got to have a revelation about you. We preach this because this is, a, this is a tragedy because the 12 disciples has been walking with Jesus for three years. And in those three years, Jesus has been turning water to wine and performing miracles, performing signs and wonders and teaching the kingdom of God. And after three years, they've been walking with Jesus knowing one person has a revelation of our holy years. Wow. Yes. Wow. Now I want to bring into context because in your relationships, you got to move into a place of revelation. And you got to ask that God reveal who I'm with. Right. Wow. Do you have a revelation? about who's connected in your life. How, you need a revelation. I, I'm telling you, you need a revelation. You need a revelation. See, see, there's three phases to, to really identifying if you have the proper people, God sent people in your life. The first one is the lowest level is information. But you cannot always make decisions about relationship by information alone because information is not always true depending on the source that you got the information from. Right. And information can be outdated. That's who they were in junior high school. That's who they was 10 years ago. You still got outdated information. What you got about them now? You don't know that God has been changing them. You don't know that their life has been renewed. But you got information about who they dealt with in high school. Wow. The information, depending on the source, is demonic information. Yeah. People, I learned this because people don't like, just because certain people don't like your friend, don't mean that you have to listen to them. Right, right. Uh, He's quiet here. Come on, come on, come on. But many of you are controlled by information from false people. Yes, that's so true. And everybody has a crap. The preacher has a crap. 
prophet has a craft. There's a craft that comes with the work, the personality, the, the, the working of that craft. Uh, the, the auto mechanic has a craft. The, yeah. the carpenter has a craft. But even witches have a craft. Yeah. And one of the lowest levels of how witches operate, they move through information. They move through the, 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 the source of gossip. Yeah. And gossip changes the information, because the design of gossip is to get you to believe something else about the individual. Yeah, right. Because I don't want them to grow, and I don't like them. I want your view of them not to be a healthy view. I want to be a distorted view. Yeah. I want you to see something differently about the, the lies that I throw into your face. Yeah. This is why you cannot listen to information by people if you don't know the information to be true. If you have not had an experience with them yourself, you got to stop letting people lie to you about the character of people because they're jealous of them. So it's information. The second thing is observation. Okay. Now this is what some of us is missing in relationships. All right. We don't observe nobody. We take we take what they say for her. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You 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 smart. You intelligent. Oh, how much money you make a year? Oh, eighty five thousand. Oh, that got to be God. I know that's God. There. Oh, what kind of car you driving? Where you go? We love this, especially single women. You in church? You got to be God. I know you go to church. So I know this got to be God. But you had observed no behavior. She's looking at me like you're crazy. 
crazy. And this didn't make sense to get married because by observation, it didn't make sense. But when I began to get in prayer, God gave me a revelation of who I'm about to marry. And when I got that revelation, God said, this is a warrant. Don't you go out what you see. Don't you go out what's in her. Don't you go out what's in you. By revelation, I call her to be by your side. By revelation, I'm giving you somebody to take you to the next level. Oh, I'm teaching some of y'all how to get to you, how to find the right person. You go by revelation. And God will give you a revelation of who you're about to marry. And that's the one. That's the one you gotta connect to. God will give you a revelation of why you need to join that church. By revelation. Yeah. Not just observation, wow. but by surface of eye, not by infinite, but by revelation. revelation. So you need a revelation, you gotta have revelation of this And this is why. Because this is a tragedy even from a leader's, a leader's perspective. Because Jesus is so frustrated. Because how are you walking beside me and you don't know who you're walking by? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, this happens in the church. You walking by a leader, and you know more about what the people think of the leader than what God has revealed to you about the leader. We got quiet right there. Yeah, yeah, this is what we do. And so this is this is the tragedy because revelation is so important. See, when you have a revelation of who you're walking beside, you ain't got to give no explanation. When people have a revelation of who you are, you ain't got to keep explaining yourself. Because when God gives you a revelation of somebody, he shows you their heart. And when you know their heart, you don't easily misinterpret what they say. Some of you got big relationships where you got to always explain yourself. And it's always high maintenance. I'm sorry, you got to walk on the eggshell because they don't have a revelation of who you are. Have a revelation of your leader. Yeah. Do you know your leader's heart? So when you know the leader's heart, the leader ain't always got to explain yeah. so what he meant. Yeah. Oh God, help me in this place. Because you know the leader's heart. Hallelujah. Here. I'm not saying you can't the leader can't clarify things, but when you know the leader's heart, you ain't got to misinterpret easily what they said, because I know my leader's heart. Hallelujah. Because what the enemy likes to do, he likes to bring accusation. He brings, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. So he brings accusation to those who don't have a revelation of who they're beside. Do you have a revelation of who your spouse is? You can be laying beside somebody for years as your spouse and don't know who they are. So this is why you cannot be congruent in your marriage because you still have yet to get a revelation of your spouse. You still go by information and observation. Yeah. Right. Wow. Hmm. So lift up those hands, right? In the name of Jesus, God, give me a revelation. Yes, sir. Give me, God, I'm, I'm moving my revelation. No more am I going by information. No more am I going by the opinion. God, give me a revelation of who I'm beside. Give me a revelation of my spouse. Give me a revelation about my friends. Give me a revelation about who I am. Give me a revelation of my leader. So when people lie and when other people speak and make accusations and false lies, they won't be loud in the revelation that you've given me of who I'm beside. God, give me a revelation. God, give me a proper understanding. God, give me the anointing to see. I need a revelation. I need a revelation. So when I have a revelation, I don't easily accuse. See, when you ain't got a revelation, when your friend don't ask the phone, you, you immediately result to they don't like me. She, she must got a personal problem with me because she couldn't answer the phone right away. But when you got a proper revelation, all oh, she gets busy. She'll get back with me. But some of you are thinking because people hadn't called you back in 24 hours. Some of you are thinking because they hadn't texted right back. But it's because you don't have a revelation of who you're beside. You don't have a revelation of who God has placed in your life. So you listen and accuse people. Leaders, we 
got to leave early sometime after service. We leave early. Here you go accused. They must don't like us. <laughs> I got ready to walk up first, but they left. They, they must be. They must don't want to be talked to you. They must don't want to minister to me because you let the enemy accuse you because you don't have the proper revelation. Come on, help. Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Hallelujah. So I need a revelation. Moving on, because only one person responds, and I'm all talking. Simon Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yes. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, Jonah, Simon of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. Ooh. Did no man introduce you to this revelation? Yeah. But this was, what the scripture says, but by the Father in heaven. And I'm telling you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Yeah. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The word Peter is where we get the Greek word Petros. Mm -hmm. It means stone. Yeah. But it's the rock simply means Petra in the Greek. So Jesus makes it a, a, a shift in words to mirror each other. But he says, you are Peter. Petros, and upon this rock, Petra, rock, this simply means many stones coming together to be one. He says, upon this rock, which is my unified church that sits upon me, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And this will give us strength to know whatever you build on the promises of God, whatever you build on Jesus will be hell proof. Oh God, it will be hell proof, which means God, no matter what what hell sins, it won't break it down because it's built on the right foundation. It's built on the rock of Jesus. When you build a business on the rock of Jesus, no matter what come type of hell that comes against that business, it won't knock that business out. Hold on, we ready. When you build your marriage on top of the foundation of Jesus, no matter what kind of hell tries to come against that marriage, it will not fall down. And guess what? Even when the marriage stays stand, it will stand strong. Because just because you've been, been together long, don't mean your marriage is strong. Oh, no matter what you build upon the rock, which is Jesus, no type of hell can come against it. He says, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail. How are you helping to build your church? Yeah. Attendance is a step. But beyond attendance, what are you contributing? Because building means you got your hands working. Yeah. Yeah. Building means you got your hands working and you're moving. How are you building your church? Is your church better because you attend there? Wow. 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 What do you contribute when you show up? What comes with you? Wow. Does blessing or help comes, or does burden show up when you show up? Wow. One thing I try to practice in my life that when I show up, help is on the way. Yeah. Yeah. If you connect it to me, you're connected to a blessing. If you connect it to me, you're connected to somebody who can shift you to your next level. But some of us, anytime we attach to something, it falls apart. Wow. Yeah. When you've been added, how is the church prospering? The Bible says when he delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, he says, the scripture says he delivered them so that they could serve. Yeah. How are you serving your church? Mm. And do you serve with a pleasant attitude? Yeah. How do you serve your church? How do you help build the kingdom of God? Wow. How are you interceding? It's quiet in here. How are you working to help the church build to get to where God is calling that ministry to go to? All right. So the scripture says, I'll build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I like this. He says this, and I will give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, when he's talking about giving you keys, giving the keys, the keys I want you to see from this perspective, I don't have the keys to your house. So in order to get access to your house, you got to give me keys to the house. 
And when you give me the keys, it gives me a license to come into another level of operation. Yeah. When Jesus says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, I'm giving you heaven's license to operate and govern on earth. So because you got the keys, it means another dimension of authority that comes with your life. This authority is what's able to unlock some things that need to be unlocked. Because the scripture says, it says whatever you bind on earth, lock will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth or unlock will be loose in heaven. Notice the text says, what you do on earth first yeah. will then happen in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. So in order for heaven, this license of keys that you have, in order for heaven to back you up, in order for you to have operation and the authorization of heaven, you got to first unlock it with the keys. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so things are locked up or held back because we won't take the keys that Jesus has given us. Wow. When you don't pray, you don't take the keys. Wow. When you don't worship, you don't take the keys. Right. When you don't study your word and learn how to quote scripture against your enemy, you don't take the keys. What you're saying is, I don't need the keys. And this is why certain doors are not unlocked because we won't take the keys that Jesus has afforded us for the hell. So the keys come to unlock it. And the question said, the gates of hell, because these keys are designed to deal with the gates. It's designed to deal with that. And so if you don't understand that Jesus Christ, as I'm closing this, there is, as he's dealing with our doctrine this month, as he's helping us to grow and understand, because we're just laying a foundation tonight. When you begin to know him on the purest level, there's a detoxing that's coming, because most of us, just because you've been in church all your life, don't mean you've been taught correctly. Right. 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 This is why you can't just listen to popular leaders on YouTube. Right. Just in and everybody. You don't really see by revelation. Is it somebody you can listen to? You just listening to them because they got a lot of followers. Yeah. But when they're teaching and they're preaching, they're releasing unsound or false doctrine into your yeah. ears. Yeah. The Bible says, test every spirit to see if it's of God. Yeah. And you got the first test, and you test it by God giving the revelation, is this of you or not? Yeah. But God says, I'm about to heal your doctrine, your doctrine of love, of how to love God's way, your doctrine of how to raise your children. I want to do it, the doctrine of biblical parenting, not the way my mama taught me how to do it. Though some things were proper, doesn't mean everything was permissible by God. Right. Right. Even my doctrine of church. I want the right doctrine of how church is. Yeah. As my doctrine has changed, my life will change. Yeah. As my doctrine is changing, I will go to where God has called me to be yeah. in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, in Jesus' name, I'm just, just sick where you are. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you for being such a holy and righteous God. We thank you, Father, that in this series, you're going to give us the proper interpretation of who you are. You're going to break down, God, old traditional mindsets and old philosophies, God. You're going to give us, God, a proper, precise, accurate, and healthy perspective of who you are according to your word. Father, we thank you according to your word that you have established who you are. You're the ancient of days. You're Adam's redeemer. You're Abel's vindicator. You're Noah's ark. You're Abraham's sacrifice. You're Moses' burning bush. You're Joshua's battle axe. God, we thank you, Father, that you're God, Gideon's fleece. We thank you, Father, that now you give us speech, your Samson's power, your David's music, your Solomon's wisdom, your Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. Now we think that you're Ezekiel, you're the wheel that's in the middle of the wheel. You're Joel's horse that's in the valley. You're Daniel's stone that comes down the mountain. You are the true Jesus Christ. You are Matthew's king. You are Mark's suffering servant. You are Luke's great physician. God, you are John's God, the word that became flesh. You are the Holy Ghost on fire in Acts. So, Father, we thank you, God, that you are the truth in the God. We 
be thinking that you are a great high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Now we think that you are the light of the world. We are our atonement and you are our mediator. So Father, we honor you tonight. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Tonight, come on, give me God. Hallelujah, God. Praise God tonight. I want to bring that. I want to make sure everyone is saved tonight. You're here, and you're here, and you want to.